We're building a hoverboard from Back to the Future that actually hovers. This episode of Make It Real is sponsored by Monster Legends, the very first game to feature the Hacksmith as a character. Download today to help support the channel and get your very own Hacksmith monster. Here at Hacksmith Industries, we just finished building our very own self-lacing shoes from Back to the Future. So naturally, the next step is building a hoverboard to go with them. Hoverboard? When I first saw Back to the Future 2 when I was just a kid, I wanted a hoverboard. Everyone wanted a hoverboard. 35 years after the movie came out, and we still don't even have anything close. For God's sake, when Marty travels from 1985 to the future, he goes to 2015. That makes us five years behind. On Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. 2015? You mean we're in the future? Well, I suppose the movie got a few things wrong. But where are we when it currently comes to hoverboards? There are basically three technologies that get us kind of close. First up is air powered. The problem with this method is that it's essentially using jet power, which basically means you're flying, not really hovering. Another popular method is using superconducting magnets. While promising, in order for this to work, you have to keep the magnets freezing cold at all times and ride on a specially engineered track, and that presents an entirely new set of obstacles. Finally, we have eddy currents. Here, we're still using magnets, but instead of freezing them, they're spinning at high speeds to generate eddy currents. We're pretty good at making things spin really fast. Here at Hacksmith Industries, we take on co-ops from a variety of tech backgrounds and experiences. This is Jimmy. Jimmy studies mechanical engineering at the University of Waterloo, and he also leads Waterloop, a student design team developing Hyperloop technologies based on Elon Musk's ideas. Some of those principles should actually translate pretty well. I think we're gonna hire him. He'll be here with us for the next four months, and in that time, he needs to build me a hoverboard. Eddy current, that's what I know, that's what I do best. First of all, what is a magnet, and how do they work? All magnets have north and south poles. These are pretty useful if you want to stick things together. The same poles repel each other. What does this look like? Looks like hovering to me. So, I know what you're thinking. Why don't we just take a bunch of heavy-duty magnets, stick them to the bottom of the board, and repel off a magnetic floor of the same pole? Well, just ask Earnshaw. He has a theorem that states a collection of point charges cannot be maintained in a stable stationary equilibrium configuration solely by the electrostatic interaction of the charges. Jimmy, Jimmy, no one understands what you just said. You gotta slow it down, man. Uh, okay, cut. Here, we have two magnets of the same pole facing each other. The only way we can make this magnet hover is if we constrain its degree of freedom. You'll see I have this other magnet on this rod, and if I let it drop down, it hovers. Now let's see what will happen if I remove the rod entirely. It didn't work very well without the rod. If we made the hoverboard like this, it would only be able to hover in one spot. And that's no fun. In other words, you just can't make another magnet hover against another. It just won't work. But, this is where eddy currents come into play. When you expose an electrical conductor, copper or aluminum, to a moving magnetic field, you create an electrical current within the metal. This is called eddy currents. I have this inductor. It's connected to this multimeter here. And, well, right now, it says zero volts. Duh, because there's no power connected to it. If I rub this magnet across the inductor, we get a voltage reading. How is this possible? Because of science, Now, due to Lenz's law, the changing electrical current actually creates a magnetic field. I guess in a simple term, it's kind of acts like a magnet. Now, if we use the same principle that the same poles repel each other, we can actually apply this to our hoverboard. And in this case, we don't break old Ernie's theorem. But how are we going to do that? We need a lot stronger magnets. There are two ways to maximize the strength of a magnet. First, a colder magnet is a stronger magnet. Yes, we do live in Canada. But keeping a magnet cold comes with its own set of infinite difficulties. The other way, is to take advantage of what's called a hallback array. A good example of this is fridge magnets. Use one side of it, and it doesn't stick. Flip it over. Apparently, our big fridge is made out of aluminum. That means magnets don't stick to it. Luckily, our small fridge here is made out of steel. So, as I was saying, you flip this over, and it sticks. 
Monster Legends is a free epic game available on Android and iOS. There are hundreds of monsters to collect and you can even breed two monsters to create your own. With different PvP modes and new events every week, fighting against your friends in real time is super easy and always different. And get this, for a limited time, there's actually an official Hacksmith monster. This is the first time a game has ever featured me. Check out the logo on the chest. How cool is that? The Hacksmith monster will be available in three versions, as an egg, a baby, and an adult. So make sure you feed me and take me to battle. Wait, that sounds kind of weird. The Hacksmith monster features two elements, fire and metal. I wonder why they came up with that. If you want to play with my official monster, there are three different ways you can get it via the in-game offers, through the Legends Pass, and through the breeding event. And hey, why not breed the Hacksmith monster? What crazy monsters can you guys make with me? That also sounds weird. I'd love to see what you guys can come up with. Just remember, the Hacksmith monster is only available from December 10th to January 8th. So make sure to download the game today using my link below. These magnets need to be fixed to our board. And the easiest way to make them move at a high speed is to create spinning wheels that are connected to the bottom of our board. In this case, we'll be using these arc magnets specifically designed for hallback arrays from K&J Magnetics. But how many magnets do we need? How strong are they? And how fast do we have to spin them? We could spend all day trying to calculate the theoretical forces they could make, but that's really hard. There are so many different factors that affect it and modeling it is really hard. Trust me, I've tried. Let's just build one to test. This is our prototype wheel, and here we're going to test out how much force they actually make and how much power we need to keep them spinning at high speeds. On this test rig, we have this load cell. This load cell will record how much force is being applied. Also, on our motor, we have applied a watt meter and a tachometer to record how much power the wheel is consuming and also at what speeds. So our tests have shown that we can do 44 pounds of force at around 5,500 RPM. James weighs about 165 pounds, so that means we'll need four magnet wheels to make him hover. But we want him higher off the ground than just level. So we're going to use eight magnet wheels to get approximately an inch off the ground. I guess I need to design a board that'll fit eight of these things. Obviously, we need to make this board look like the hoverboard from the movie. Hoverboard. It's such a 1980s imagining of the future. The pink, the diagonal lines, I love it. I found a one-to-one -one 3D model to work with. Let's transpose the wheels onto the board and see how much space we need. Then we can scale the model up until everything fits inside. Unlike a conventional skateboard that bends when you stand on it, we can't have that with our board. So. Instead, we're gonna make this board out of aluminum. It's light and strong, but more importantly, it's non-magnetic. Let's make it real. Where we're going, we don't need roads.
Now, the last step is to balance the wheels. If we don't balance them, this is how they're gonna perform. We've sent out our wheels to Fan Tactics. They specialize in dynamic balancing of rotating assemblies. Balancing our wheels will ensure they don't explode and they can safely operate at super high speeds. Wheels are ready, board is ready. In part two of the hoverboard series, we're gonna be wrapping the board in beautiful pink 80s glory. I'm gonna assemble it, I'm gonna make out with my mom, and James is gonna hover. Burr, burr, burr. Jimmy, what happened? Well, this is what happened. It's, it's not on fire. It's not on fire. It's on fire. <laughs> oh, it's sparky. Okay. Sometimes things don't exactly go to plan. You're not going to want to miss part two of our hoverboard series. Things go a little off the rails. And remember to download Monster Legends to get the hacks with Monster. This offer is only available from December 10th until January 8th, so get yours now. The link is in the description below. That's heavy.